Hey guys, it's Deja from CrochetEverAfter.com. Today is our newest Learn a Stitch washcloth, and this is a crossed single crochet washcloth. So we take some basic single crochets and we cross them over each other to make this cool looking texture. So it's a pretty easy stitch once you understand it, and that's what this video is for. So Grab some worsted weight yarn, a 5mm USH hook, the pattern below, and let's get started. Okay, to start the washcloth off, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. So we have our tail. Just take your other hand and flip down to make a circle. Reach through that circle to grab the yarn that's attached to your ball and pull that through and just tighten it down. Stick your hook in and then pull the yarn that's attached to the ball to tighten that up. Now we're ready to start chaining. We're going to chain 23. So to chain, we always yarn over from back to front. Then turn your hook down and pull through the loop on your hook. And then push so that your loop is on the shaft of your hook. And that'll give you even chains. If you pull and then push, yarn over, pull and push. So if you're making this washcloth into something else, the stitch or the foundation chain multiple that you want to make is a multiple of two and then add one to that total. So I made 22, which is a multiple of two, and I added one, so this is 23 chains. So whatever size you want to make this, make it a multiple of two and then add one at the end. And you'll be able to make this any size you want. Very simple pattern. So get to 23 chains and we'll start row one. Okay, I've got my 23 chains and now I'm ready for row one. You could technically start this pattern repeat right now, but it is extremely difficult to do it into our chain. So we're gonna just do some single crochets all the way across. So we're gonna skip this first chain that we made that's just for height, and then we're gonna start single crocheting into the next chain. So I'm just going to grab this back loop because it's nice and easy, pull up my loop, yarn over, pull through both. So if you know how to foundation single crochet, you can do that. Just do 22 of those instead of 23 foundation chains. But we're going to single crochet in each stitch across. This will make it easier for the next row, which will be our pattern repeat. It'll be easier to see all of our stitches, so you'll understand in a second but head across with a single crochet in every one. Make sure you have 22 at the end. Make sure you don't lose any stitches. And we'll get started on row two. Okay, here's my last single crochet. And now we're gonna turn our work and we're gonna begin our pattern repeat. So we're crossing our single crochets. So to do that, we need to first make a chain one so that we can get up to the height and then we're going to skip the first stitch. So this is our first stitch, this first V. We're going to skip that and we're going to do a single crochet in the second one. We're going to come back to this one in just a second so we aren't actually not doing a stitch in there. It's just because we're crossing our single crochets, we need to skip the first one and work in the second. So we put our hook under both loops. Yarn over and pull up your loop and just like a normal single crochet. And then the second one is going to be different because we're going to go back over to that first stitch and it's a little bit hidden because we're crossing over. But notice, kind of pay attention to how you went into this loop here. Notice we have kind of a top loop which are, is part of the top of your stitch. And then you have that loop right underneath it. Notice when I went in there, I went above that line or above this piece of yarn and I just went under the top two loops. So look for that over here. We have our chain one right here and then we have our stitches. Here are two double loops. So when you're working also, you can kind of pull it apart and look for that big hole there. You can see this is that stripe or that piece of yarn that's coming across. So go right above that. So kind of right in that big hole, put your hook in. Usually that one's about the hardest because it has that chain one sitting on top. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to see. 
So I pull my loop like normal and I'm going to pull it kind of high because I'm crossing over and I want to get back over here to the other side of that single crochet. So don't worry about pulling it a little bit higher than normal, you want to do that. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through both. And so now we have our very first cross single crochet. Notice on top we still have our stitches. So we have that chain one over here and then we have one and two. So pay attention to those, make sure you're having 22 on every row. So now this is that first stitch that we worked into. We need to skip the next stitch and work into the one after to make another cross. So we go under those first two loops or the top two loops, pull up your loop, pull through. This one's a little easier to see. You can see that nice big crossover and the big hole that we're gonna go through. So you put your hook through yarn over, pull it up nice and high to cross over, yarn over and pull through. So we're going to do this all the way across where we skip one stitch, do a single crochet, and then go back to the previous stitch, yarn over, and do another single crochet. Make sure that this loop doesn't pop over onto the other side of this loop. We want them in line just like normal, just like we would do a regular single crochet, you have the loop on your hook and the loop you pull up. Just pull through. So when you're looking, just look for where that last stitch or the very the second last stitch was made. You'll see it pulling up on your stitch so that you know you have your next stitch. You can also turn it sideways because you're not going to see the V from that stitch you worked into. So there's one V and two V. So go into the second V. Pull up your loop, some slack, then go back under the loop, pull up, Oop. and I made a mistake. So notice, make sure that you go into the actual stitch. So you'll see when I pull this up, it's pulling really high. I'm getting a really huge hole. That means I put my hook in the wrong spot. So it's always good when I make a mistake so that you can see so you don't do it too, make sure that you're looking for that crossover here that we've been working into. Go right above that into that hole. Notice when I pull up, it's not such a great hole and it's a lot lower. So keep on going across. Take your time until you get used to seeing what this looks like. You'll see I stop, oops, I stop and I look, I pull, I kind of pull everything apart because it helps me to see where everything is. Then I insert my hook and do the stitch. So I'm taking my time so that I don't miss one. Because if you get to the end and you don't have two stitches left, you missed one somewhere. So keep going and we'll finish off this row and start the next. Okay, I've got two stitches left, so we're just gonna do our single crochet in this very last stitch and then head back to the one before and do the last crossover. So now we have row two complete. See we're getting a cool little texture here from the crossovers. You'll notice that it's kind of a little gap right here. Don't worry about that. That's why we put borders on our work so that it covers all of those um, little gaps that we may have. But for row three, basically the exact same thing. We're going to chain one. We're going to skip that first stitch. So stitch. So remember that just um, if you're having trouble seeing where to put your hook when you come back over here at the beginning of the row, turn your work, look where your stitch is, and keep an eye on these loops. So here is that loop that I'm going to go under. So if I went under it right now, you can see that this is what I'm going above. So keep an eye on that. That'll help you out when you're going under those loops. So keep an eye on all that stuff when you're making this single crochet over here. So we're gonna do that first single crochet, and then we come back. So there's that loop that I was talking about. And my loops are up here, so I'm just gonna go right above that and single crochet. Now we got those first two done. Skip one, and this is it. This is what we're gonna do for the whole washcloth. Very easy, but a very interesting texture. It'll help you really start to understand your single crochet stitches. It'll help you um, identify the different parts of it. 
So it's a good stitch to really pay attention to what a single crochet looks like. So we're going to go and keep on working on this. You can follow the gauge in my pattern if you want the complete square or you can, if you've seen all my other washcloths, when you fold it on the diagonal to make like a triangle, when the triangle lines up you'll have your square, but we're just going to keep on going through. Oops. Always take your time. Remember just those top two loops. If you're working this and you're wondering, am I catching just the top two loops? Just when you put your hook in, stop and pull those two loops apart. If you've caught anything else, you're going to see it underneath the top two loops. So if you're not used to working single crochets or you're brand new to crochet, you, that's a trick you can do to make sure you have the top two loops of any stitch. Just pull it apart. For this, you can see I can do that too. I can just pull this stitch aside that I just worked and pull those across. So you can do it for either stitch to make sure you're grabbing just those top two loops. This is probably so um, texturized though that even if you accidentally caught an extra loop on any of these stitches, you probably wouldn't even notice. So it's, pr it's a pretty um, easy fail safe kind of pattern. So keep working, we'll come back in a while, check it out, so you can see how it looks all done up. Okay, I finished all the rows of the washcloth, so I wanted to show you how to count these just in case you need to. If you look at the front of your project, you can actually see some lines forming. So you can see these lines here that are coming across. So in between each line is two rows of the crossed single crochet. So just begin at the bottom. We have um, one row of regular and then the crossed here, but that's still two rows. So we just count by twos in between the lines. We have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, and 16 rows all together so far. And I'm just gonna do one more row since I have one row of regular single crochet here. I'm going to end the top row with a row of regular single crochet. So I'm gonna pick up my hook, give me my yarn, and the chain one and then I'm just going to single crochet in every stitch across so under both loops and just do all single crochets just finishing up this last row and I've decided not to put a border on this because I'm really liking the sides of the project. So, single crochet here. This one right at the turning chain is always a little bit difficult to get under. I missed it again. There we go. I'm gonna fasten this off. So that's why I did that row of single crochet on the top so that it can match the bottom because I like the sides of this. I like this kind of little dipped edge that I get on the side. So I'm going to leave it like that. So you could even present it this way where it's running up. That kind of looks really cool. Either way, I like how that's looking. So I'm going to weave in these ends and it will be complete since we're not doing a um, border on it we're pretty much done so that is the crossed single crochets you can check out the review for the yarn under the lily and cream sugar sorry lily sugar and cream scents yarn I have five different scented yarns that I'm looking at and this is one of them this is vanilla so you can check out what I think about how it smells and how well it lasts on that video when it comes up but thank you for watching.